All right. Yo, yo, yo. Y-O. This is Germs from Germs Boxing, a.k.a. Uh, Germs Saddam is the Boxing Prophet. Wada, 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 you, you, whoop, you, whoop, whatever. All right. This is Germs with another boxing prediction. Another triple header for y'all motherfuckers. Sorry, baby, for the cussing, cussing. I know it's been busting, busting. All right, this time I'm gonna be talking about the Cinnamon Kid Canelo Alvarez versus um, Gomez, Alfonso Gomez. I'm gonna be talking about Eric Morales versus Lucas Matisse. Then I'll be talking about Pacquiao Marquez, the third one. I almost said rubber match, but I said third one, okay? So, anyways. First, before I get into this, I want to talk about the fight that had just passed. I want to talk about Ruslan Shagaev and Povetkin. I got a message. I got a message before the fight actually happened. And because I had predicted that Shagaev was going to outbox Povetkin, you know, and, and this message said, Germs, remember when you said you can't measure heart? Well, Povetkin is dedicating this fight to his dad who died last year. And I was like, shit, I did not know that. You see, like in other videos I say, you can't measure heart. When I make the boxing predictions, there's uh, formulas, there's mathematics that's involved, okay? What, what you can't measure is heart. You can't measure love. I've been saying this over and over again. Sometimes those are put into the formulas and then, uh, you know, create some different results than what I had expected. Yes, Shagav could have boxed Povetkin any other year. Yes, yeah, I, 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 think, I think that would have happened. But Povetkin, there's, he's more solid than I've seen him before. The good thing I like about when there's a prediction that I thought was going to be obvious and it turns out, you know, the other way around, it makes me happy because it makes me realize that the other boxer stepped his game up. Povetkin definitely is a lot more solid than I remember him. Definitely, I mean, this, uh, this layoff. They both had like six, eight month layoff, both of them did. And uh, it shows who was more prepared when they returned you know what i mean so when they both came back right away you can see it on the body that chagav was a little more flabby than he usually is a little more soft and uh povetkin was more solid so he's a little he's taking himself more serious povetkin actually looks physically like ivan drago so um he still doesn't have that power but he's solid fundamentals and in the heavyweight division right now that's all you need to go by look at vladimir klitschko ultimate fundamentals and then look at him look at him you know he's still fucking shining and shit um they say the heavyweight division is dead it's not dead it, the, the heavyweight division is live and kicking all around the world you look at fights like david hay and vladimir klitschko i know it was a snooze fest or you know what it was a little drama going on there because of the whole shit with david hay you know his running his mouth and then being outboxed one-sided by vladimir klitschko so that, that was the drama within itself so, and, and it drew all this big ass crowd big 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 crowd tyson fury and Derek kisora it was like a whatever champ you know on paper was like you know what i mean why is it on pay-per-view i bought it because i knew stylistically these guys were just going to struggle with each other it was going to be a fight and actually it was going to be competitive and it was it was competitive and um povetkin shagayev another scuffle you know shagayev was doing the shit that i said he was going to do in the beginning you know and then he obviously just uh, at the end, Povetkin just stepped it up. You know, he stepped it up down the road. Um, that, that's the, that's what I like about the heavyweight division right now across around the world. It's not dead. It's alive and kicking. Everywhere else is alive and kicking. Look at look at David Tua and Molly Barrett. That one rematch, I really thought that David Tua was going to take it. And bon Monty Barry beat him, but not without getting dropped in the last round. <coughs> Still some drama. Heavyweight division, come on. I mean, it is pretty sick. It is live and kicking. Just because we have no heavy American hopes right now, that doesn't mean that it's dead. You know, just because the best that we can come up with is uh, Chris Ariola, probably, you know, but... But that doesn't mean nothing. I mean, look around the world, man. Everything, everything's solid everywhere. Here you go, baby. Here, play with this. But, um... But yeah, man, that's all I wanted to talk about real quick before I went into the predictions, okay? So on to the predictions, on to the Canelo Alvarez. Like I said before, I tripped out when I found out he was Mexican the first time I saw him. He was 
you know, like I said, it was in a ring with somebody else from another country. And I was thinking that the other guy was the Irish or the Scottish guy and him, you know, uh, uh, I mean, the other guy being the Mexican and him being the Irish or the Scottish guy. You know what I'm saying? But but the thing is, Cadelito, which means cinnamon in Spanish, which actually was a term for a, like an insult. You know, when you call somebody, you know, like, you know, just to tease him. You know, they used to call him cinnamon when he was a kid. Canelo is not, is not, is not like your your natural hype job. He's not your natural Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. He's not your 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 actual your your average Hector Camacho Jr. You know, he's not a hype job. He is actually a fighter. He's a real fighter. I mean, he's got a lot of leaks, a lot of holes in his defense. He's got he's got a lot of flaws, but. He's ex exciting to watch. He's exciting to watch. You know, if anything, the worst, the worst comes to worst. He might be another. I mean, if he had that one punch power, we could probably be looking at another Arturo Gatti. Speaking of Arturo Gatti, Alfonso Gomez is going to be up in line to take on the cinnamon kid. But you know, this is the thing, a problem I have with Alfonso Gomez. Alfonso Gomez is like hot and cold. You don't know what you're going to get. Um, you know, you you can see it, it can it can either be the Alfonso Gomez that showed up against Arturo Gatti, the one that you look so precise with his jab, had a stiff jab and a stiff cross. You know what I'm saying? You know he had that game on. Or it can be the one that faced uh, Cotto, the one that was uh, just rolling around, running around, you know, bitching, complaining, wincing, grimacing, and and, and and crying, not even fighting and trying to struggle with him. Either one or two can fight show up. So if I look at his power ratio, knockout ratio, and I look at his losses, and I look at his, you know, his actual, his fights, I would say that the Arturo Gatti fight was a miracle. He never performed that well. That's the only time, the last time, the first and last time he's ever performed that flawless, okay? Um, and plus, you know, Arturo Gatti was going through some shit. You know, that was the last fight he had. He, you know, he was already thinking retirement before he went in there. He, you know, he had his, he had his problems, you know. So, so I would say that that fight was more of a mirage, and uh, Alfonso Gomez has always been a C plus fighter, and he's always gonna stay there. The problem, I, I don't know why they don't. I mean, I know De La Hoya is battling with some Coco issues, but I, I like the idea when they were talking about the Alfredo Angulo, somebody, somebody more solid, somebody, you know, because everybody knows who Canelo is. You don't need to hype him up no more. It's kind of like. A famous rapper gets famous. You, you don't need to do no more little shows at the bars no more. Everyone knows who you are now. Now it's time for some big shit. Everyone knows who Canelo is. Okay, I get it. All right, you okay? So you're gonna get the guy from the contender. You know what I'm saying? But they're still not. It's still gonna be talking shit to him. Now, what if he loses to him? Oh, oh fuck. Well, well, that's that for him. But hey. Uh, Canelo has the, the, the Mexican liver shot, okay? So I, I'm going to bank on that. I'm going to bank on the liver shot, bank on the liver shot, bank on the liver shot. And uh, uh, Alfonso Gomez hates body shots. And you obviously can tell in the Cotto fight. But um, he's going to dig in for there. He's going to take out his kidneys, take out his liver, take out his fucking guts and his shit and everything. Sorry. Um, but that's going to be it. It's, that's not even going to be a competitive fight. Canelito is just gonna, it's gonna be a slow two rounds, the third round, you know, it's gonna be a little action, you know, uh, fourth, fifth, you know, you see Alfonso Gomez, you know, try to mix it up with him, you know, try to take the Mexican out of, out of, uh, uh, you know, Canelo, you know, and, and you see Canelo just digging into the body, digging into the body, round eight, nine, it's gonna be a little scuffle, it's gonna be exciting, don't get me wrong, it's gonna be exciting the, the first half of the fight, but then Canelo is too strong, too tall, too solid, at this weight for Alfonso Gomez, you know what I'm saying? And Alfonso Gomez is, I think, is a naturally a smaller guy, so I think it's gonna have to do with power. And, and and Alfonso Gomez is going to get stopped in round nine. I say it's more likely gonna happen. He's gonna get stopped in round nine. That's it. Boom! Wave the fight. He just pissed on himself. That's it. Alfonso Gomez, go back to your dressing room and roll some more tacos because. Uh, it doesn't matter for you no more. You already got your paycheck. You're already running back to Telefutura. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, uh, Canelo Alvarez is going to do that to him. And that's what's going to happen. Anyways, on to my next prediction. Matisse, Lucas Matisse and Eric Morales. If the Maidana and Morales fight didn't happen, I probably would have said, I probably would have made another, um, what do you call it? I probably would have made another... <laughs> Another prediction, you know, because 
Matisse has almost the same similar style as as uh, almost has the same style as Maidana. Almost not as much whacking. He doesn't have the, the, the same kind of power as Maidana, but he does have. He does have that same mauling style, the same charging forward, 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 forward style. Yes, he does. Oh, crap. Ooh. Oh, I turned the mic off accidentally. But anyways, he does have the same style as as uh, Maidana, Lucas Batista's. So, I think we're going to go in for another war. Another candidate for fight of the year. Yes, sir. Why? Because Matisse has power to put you down, but he still has those defense those holes, those leaks. He has more flaws than Maidana does, okay? He has more flaws than Maidana. He, he has light power, a lot of light power. So this is what's gonna, you know, this is what's gonna make it exciting, okay? And and think about it. If Ma Morales fought Maidana so great with just one eye, imagine what a two-eye Morales is gonna do to a Lucas Matisse. With a Lucas Matisse, not to a Lucas Matisse. Because don't get me wrong, I think Lucas Matisse is gonna might even win. I think he can beat Eric Morales. You know what I'm saying? But I, I think he's gonna expect it. Mo, Maidana didn't expect Morales to be Morales, but I think Matisse is gonna expect Morales to be Morales. So he's gonna step up his game. He's not gonna go charging in. But then again, Morales is Morales. He did surprise us this year. So you know what? I'm gonna go with my heart on this one. I'm not gonna go, because my student is saying Matisse. My, my student inside of me is saying Matisse because Matisse's got the formula to break somebody down like Morales. But my heart, I'm gonna go with the tequila pump on this one. I'm gonna go with Morales, man. I'm gonna go with Morales simply because of Mexican pride. Simply because I rarely do this, but I'm going to go with Morales simply because of Mexican pride. Because I know he can do it. I know he's like the rocky little engine that could. He's not going to keep up. And you doubting Morales? Ha, that's what he wants you to do. You keep doubting him? What happened with Barrera? He beat him. What happened with Pacquiao? He beat him. You keep doubting Morales? What happened with Maidana? Shit, dropped him in the ditches and he got robbed. What happened? So that's who Morales really is. That's why we love Morales. And I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to say that he's going to have box Matisse in the Kennedy of the fight of the year. That's it. Stop giving us fights of the year. Shit. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyways, on to the next fight. Pacquiao Marquez. All right. I'm going to tell you what you want me to say. I'm going to tell you what you want and what you're going to hear. I'm going to tell you that. Morales, I mean, Marquez is, is stronger at this weight. When he goes up, he's stronger. I'm going to tell you that his right hand can be a really good grip tonight for someone like Pacquiao going in, out, in and out. I'm going to tell you that Marquez, you know, is probably the best light, junior lightweight right now going up to, well, I'm going to tell you that he can be faster than Pacquiao, and I'm going to tell you that they might even go down almost to a draw. That's what you want to hear. That's what I want to hear. But that's not what's going to happen. Marquez gets a little more hittable when he gets up. He's a little slower. Yes, he's a little stronger. I mean, he's heavier. Um, I can't stop thinking of the Marquez Mayweather fight. How virtually small he made Marquez look at this weight he made him look like he can't even punch a hole through a wet paper bag you know what I'm saying it was like and Mayweather's there's not even a punch you know at this weight Marquez is gonna be a little chubby a little flabby cuz that's his body he's short he's short he's like my height, you know, maybe a little taller than me. Uh, you know, if you, I've seen him live, he's a small guy. Pacquiao has those calves, he's got those muscles, he's got that fucking, those legs, that ass, that fucking stomach, that fucking chest, he's got the little, he's a He-Man, for Christ's sake. He's a little fucking He-Man, a little action figure. You know, you can compact muscle in that shit. Fucking Morales is a little deer. He's a fucking dead deer this way with Pacquiao's magic. You know, I don't believe Pacquiao's, 
you know, they say that with all the steroids shit, you know, I was gonna do a video about that, but you know, I don't wanna hurt no feelings. I don't wanna hurt no feelings. You know, let's just put it this way. People say that he's taking some substance. I never say that. No one, I've never seen it, and no one's ever seen it. But if a person says he saw a UFO, and then they saw a UFO, and he saw a UFO, are you gonna have to be there to see the UFO yourself to believe that they actually saw a UFO? You know what I'm saying? I just put it, I just leave it at that. I just leave it at that. Use your third eye, use a holographic way of thinking, figure it out what that means. But anyways, Pacquiao is gonna be way too strong, way too big. It's it's gonna be like, at this weight, I will be shocked. I will be shocked if, if Marquez does something to Pacquiao. I will be shocked. I think Mar uh, Marquez has never been knocked out before. This is the first time we're going to see Marquez get knocked out. And and all because, you know what I mean? I mean, think about it. Think, go back to the, the to his uh, recent fights. When he fought, um, you know, Casamayor, you know, he, was, he struggled there. When he fought uh, Juan Diaz, he struggled there. And they both don't really have big punches. You know, when he fought both times with Juan Diaz. Um... Uh, Cat Cities, you know, Cat Cities is slow, lumbering, yet he left hook dropped Marquez and he had to go into down deep in the trenches and go to war with Cat Cities almost and then he spanked him at the end. You know, when, when, when you consider that Robert Guerrero completely outboxed him safely, you know, I'm talking about Cat Cities. So basically, Marquez, yes, he's an action fighter. Yes, he's fucking Mexican's legend. But he dropped some notches down in the boxing department, in the in the in the um, speed, in the pop. A lot of people were thinking upset. I don't think so. I don't think so. This is you know, uh, Pacquiao is not stupid. You know, Pacquiao is not gonna hold on real quick. Okay, so all right. So, anyways, Pacquiao. Pacquiao's way too strong, way too, is way too solid at this weight, way too fast than Marquez, you know, and you gotta remember, the first time they fought was like 30 pounds ago, not in the featherweights, and then they met again in lightweight, basically, and this is welterweight, baby, this is, this is, this is home of not, fucking, Costa Zoo punches, fucking uh, Miguel Cotto left hooks to the body. This is the home of Mayweather straight rights. This is the this is a different zone, baby. This is man, you had to read your paper right before you even signed it, Marquez. You know you should have you should have dropped uh, Pacquiao down a few few pounds, man. But this is it. this this that's that's gonna be it's just gonna be another um, a little little mouse. You gonna be dangling over the cobra and the cobra going. You know, that's it, that's it. Um, this is not gonna be as competitive as I would want it to be. If it is, then holy shit, the Marquez is greater than anyone ever thought, that I even thought, okay? Because I know Marquez. And uh, if the Marquez that would, that would be magnificent against Pacquiao, should have been a little bit evident in the Mayweather fight. Yet, we didn't see no good Marquez there. You know, and everybody bashed on Mayweather for picking on a little guy. And, this, and Pacquiao was doing the same thing. Even though they fought twice before. That's the magic trick. He, that's a magician right there. I'm going to show you. I'm going to fight the same guy. The same little guy everybody was bitching about when they fought Mayweather. Because I fought him twice before. Yet, it's doing the same thing. Doing the same thing. Anyways, that's what's going to happen. Um... Canelo is going to outbox Gomez, knock him out late. Uh, Morales is going to win. He's going to win against Matisse. He's going to, oof, he's going to win. I wonder who Barrera's fighting. But anyways, um, Pacquiao is going to be too much for Marquez this way. He's going to even stop him probably even round, round five, round six. Trust me, man. I don't know why. I just have this feeling. He's going to stop. Okay, that's too early. I'm taking too much away from him. Okay, round 11. All right, that's it. That's the that's the latest. I think that's the latest. Marquez is going to get stopped by uh, Pacquiao. Cuts, 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 cuts. Uh, blood, blood, blood. That's about it. Germs, germs boxing. Subscribe. Bada boom, bada bing. I got music. 
I got great music. Jeremy's a rapper. Uh, yeah, you know what? Leave it at that. Let me know. All these predictions that I'm making are suggestions from my subscribers. So if there's any fights out there that you want me to talk about, let me know. Because I love doing this shit. This is my heart. All right? Germs. Your boxing. Ah, rap.